Welcome back to Huchos. Today on Huchos, I'm going to teach you how to buffer Coco Cure for use in hydroponics. Now, here on Huchos, we use a lot of cocoa. I use it in this super simple strawberry system, in my rain gutter grow systems, in my auto refilling potted plant systems, as well as my float box and dragon fruit hydroponic systems. Now, most of my cocoa that I've used so far on the channel is a bagged hydroponic grade of cocoa that I get from a large box hardware store that's close by it to me. However, I know that this is not necessarily what is available to everyone. It depends on your country, in your location, in the world. Cocoa is generally available to everyone. However, it may be that it's cheaper for you to access the unbuffered and unwashed version of the substrate. Even for me, getting my hands on the ready to use hydroponic grade of cocoa is hard. So every time I see it in my local store, I buy their whole palette, their whole stock of the product. And that means that everyone in my area is also dealing with a shortage of cocoa. Sorry about that. So before we get started, I just want to explain what cocoa is, where it comes from, and some of its beneficial characteristics for its uses within hydroponics. Cocoa peat, also known as coconut fiber, cure, cure pith, or cure dust, is an organic planting media made from coconut husks that surrounds the shell of the coconut. Generally, cocoa peat contains high potassium, sodium, and EC, but the concentrations vary with sources as it is an organic growing material. The husks are used to produce various types of growing substrates, including cocoa peat chips and chunks. The importance of cocoa peat in hydroponics cannot be overemphasized as it has an ideal pH, has a more than 22% air holding capacity and has excellent drainage properties. Its antifungal properties help plants get rid of soil borne diseases and it is 100% renewable, easy to hydrate, and is environmentally friendly if sourced from properly managed plantations. Cocoa peat has a naturally high cation exchange capacity. Now this is good because it can hold onto and make available nutrients to the plants when needed. However, it can also work against us in hydroponics by removing nutrients from the solution that we would rather have available to the plants. Therefore, we need to buffer the cocoa in order to make sure that the nutrients that we're adding in to our hydroponic systems aren't going to be sequestered into our cation exchange sites on our cocoa. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how to buffer this. This is unbuffered cocoa cure that is available from most nursery supply stores. Now you can get unwashed and unbuffered cocoa blocks that just require a wash before you get to this stage that I'm at now. So if you only have the blocks available, wash them with water first, getting all of the really fine particulate out, and then you'll be at the stage that I'm at. Okay, so first let me explain why we buffer cocoa. Cocoa has a high CEC, which means it has a high cation exchange capacity. Essentially, it has a bunch of negatively charged points within the surface area of the material that allow positively charged ions to attach to them. Now, naturally, the environment that the cocoa comes from has potassium and sodium ions proliferating throughout the material. That means that all of the exchange sites within the material are taken up with sodium and potassium. This actually works against us in hydroponics because the exchange sites actually have a greater affinity for calcium ions 
which is one of the nutrients that we try to make available to our plants. What happens when we use unbuffered cocoa within our hydroponic systems is that the greater affinity for the calcium releases the sodium and the potassium ions into the solution, causing what is known as calcium lockout. Now, calcium lockout is when the calcium from our nutrient solution is attracted to the negative points on our high CEC cocoa and the calcium replaces all of the sodium and potassium and becomes unavailable to the roots of the plants, also giving an excess of sodium and potassium to the nutrient solution from the cations that have been released out of our cocoa. The way that we get around this is by pre-amending our cocoa. So by actually pre-charging our cocoa with a calcium nitrate solution, we release all of the sodium and potassium and discard it before we use it as a growing media for the plants. There is a magic number and I'm working off a peer-reviewed scientific journal for this number and that number is for every 1.5 kilograms of cocoa we'll be using 100 grams of calcium nitrate and 15 liters of water so let's get to mixing our cocoa and for this i'm going to be using this cement mixer this cement mixer is brand new has not had anything in it before to this i'll be adding my cocoa now here i have 22 kilos of cocoa and I'm going to be adding 5.5 kilograms to my mixer so that I only have the mixer half full and I can turn over the cocoa to mix it. So 5.5 kilograms of cocoa to this 5.5 kilograms of cocoa I'll be adding 55 liters of water and 350 grams of pre-mixed in hot water calcium nitrate. And of course, the calcium nitrate is the nitrocal part of our hydroponic nutrient. So if you're using dry nutrient, like I am, the calcium that we're using to buffer our cocoa is generally the calcium half, the part B of our hydroponic nutrient. And now I'm just going to mix that up. Now, obviously the other way you can do this is just by mixing it into a wheelbarrow. And you can just use a shovel to mix the buffered solution. Okay, so the paper I'm working off found that the reduction of sodium and potassium is at an optimal level after 36 hours of soaking in solution. So I'm gonna leave these to sit for 36 hours and that is going to give me a 78% reduction in potassium and a 94% reduction in sodium that is on our cation exchange points within our cocoa media. After that 36 hour period, we are then able to drain away the excess and the cocoa left over will be charged with calcium ions and ready for use in hydroponics. Another alternative method than the method that I've shown you today for washing your cocoa would be to use large fabric pots within a large reservoir that you could dip your cocoa cure into and leave sit for 36 hours and then remove by just lifting them out and letting the cocoa drain. This takes care of the drainage and the containment of the cocoa in one go. So rather than having to scoop it out or tip it into, you could just have these bags dunked into your calcium nitrate solution and then pulled out ready to go once the 36 hours is up. For me, I can just tip my mixer straight into these bags and the solution will run away and I can also tip my wheelbarrow straight into these bags as well. Once you've drained away all of the excess solution, you can then add in your other amendments like perlite or peat moss if you want to create a custom mix for your hydroponic system. 
when using this cocoa in whatever system you're putting it into, it's best to flush the whole system with water and then you can charge it with your nutrient solution and start growing. All right, so that's pretty much everything you need to know about buffering cocoa for your hydroponic uses. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Hucho's. A bit dry, but it is necessary if you don't have access to a hydroponic grade of cocoa. Happy hydroponicking. Hope you learned something. And I'll see you next time on Hucho's.